Today we're going to be looking at the KA50, otherwise known as the Black Shark. As you can see, it's a little bit different to the other helicopter we've looked at. It's got two rotors and they go in opposite directions. And if you notice, there is no tail rotor. So any movement supplied with a cyclic, as you can see, change the angles of the blades. Notice also that's opposite and anything with the collective changes the pitch. You might not be able to see that very well but if I change the angle you'll see the pitch changing of the blades very subtly and when I move the cyclic around you can see the angles on the blades changing. Now you'll also find that when you start using the rudders, either with foot pedals or a twist grip, you'll see not only does the rudder change, but there's a very subtle movement in the blades as well. So this first section uh, for the Black Shark is primarily about startup. Now whenever I do a startup, imagine the pilot sitting in this seat over here is where the right knee would be so I refer to this area as the right knee the right thigh the right butt cheek and this is the right shoulder and the same on the left so the left knee the left thigh the left butt cheek and the left shoulder if you want to move up from there then basically if you're making notes on this startup procedure just put RK for right knee up up and then it will give you an idea of where the switch is I'm not using track IR, I'm just using the keys to move around the cockpit. This will give me good angles to look around and hopefully it'll give you a nice clear view of what's going on. Right, we'll start right knee upper upper and we're going to switch on the two batteries. When I hover over the batteries you'll see tool tips, although that is not necessarily present on any servers that you will play. Down on the right knee still we'll just put intercom on and VHF2 and now we're going to switch round to the right shoulder on the lower part and we're going to switch on the ecran and then scoot round and look at the front and we're going to press the red flashing light on the dashboard on the top left we're now going to turn round again and over on the right shoulder along this row of switches you'll see INU we're going to switch that on turning back we're now going to switch on I'll zoom in so you can see the switch better on the left knee the KO4 and also on the display so you'll notice it's starting BIOS and yes it is uh, basically the Abris is uh, a PC you'll see it's starting up with what is it 486 DX4 which if you're extremely old you'll uh, know exactly what that is and what it means Right, we're now going to start up the APU generator, uh, sorry, the APU, and the APU basically provides uh, power, enabling the fuels. This is all on the right thigh, upper, upper. We'll turn around to the left. Let's look at the left knee area. You'll find a start button here, and this little toggle. When this toggle is in the middle, it switches on the APU. When it's on the bottom left, it's the left engine. When it's on the bottom right, it's the right engine. So now as we want to do the APU, we're just going to press the button once. And then we're going to take off the rotor brake. You'll hear a few noises. This is the APU firing up. All these lights will come on. That one, that one, and that one. And when that one's on, you'll see this drop down a little bit. And that means the APU is ready. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to shut the door with right control C because it gets a little bit noisy right now we've got the APU going we can start up the left engine so we've got LH for the left engine that's on the right butt cheek upper upper so it's where the engine control is and then if we have a look along that row we'll find the fuel shut off valves and we're going to switch up the fuel shut off valve for the left engine we're going to put the toggle if you remember on the left side on the left knee we're going to push that down to the left half or left engine and then we're going to press the start button and then the fuel cut off 
once that starts we'll see a gauge on there there's a needle with a number one and that will start running up till it hits round about seven while we're waiting for that we're going to turn on another couple of switches so we've got the standby SAI on look at the front and we're just going to uncage the standby attitude indicator and set that up ok we can see the needle creeping round it will be stable round about 700 remember this is revs so it's times 10 so that will be 7000 revs that's for the engine by the way not the rotor once that's reached that point there we can see the temperatures rise there for the left engine so now we can start the right engine in exactly the same way so here's the EEG on the end control panel which is on the right butt cheek and up and there's the right fuel cutoff further along let me just change this angle a little bit so we can see the switch turning around now we're going to put the toggle into the right hand engine press the start and press the right fuel cutoff while that's going on I'm just going to look at the right thigh right upper 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 and switch on I think that's the fire extinguisher as we've got power now it's a good idea to have that switched on check the uh, engines see if this one's reached up to speed which it hasn't yet it's still on its way as that's going you'll see the temperatures increasing from the exhaust gas which is what this means exhaust gas temperature Okay, now they both level. Notice the hoods come on, we just can turn the brightness down just a touch. Right now on the left butt cheek, this is effectively the throttle, and there are no switches or buttons there. You have to either program the keyboard or a joystick button, but it's a bit of a waste of a button. We simply press page up twice to put it into work mode. Watch the you also look on the Watch overhead the and we switch the dust protector on. Right, so now both engines are running at the correct speed. We can now switch on the, um, the AC generators. Okay, so the AC generators are now on, which means we can actually stop the APU. And if you look over at the left knee area, there's an APU shut off. One click goes down and we're going to just switch the cutoff fuel back to off right now we're going to start switching on the rest of the radio equipment this is part of the DL link if you're flying by yourself you can leave this whatever if you're flying with others the flight lead takes number one and switches this round into commander um, if you're the wingman you do two three or four and you put it down as wingman We've got the heading bank and pitch hold, the fire extinguisher, uh, sorry, the ejection seat system. And if we look on the back, we've also got a switch, the L140, and the UV26. That's on the right shoulder. Right, now these blue lights, basically, there is an input damping on the controls of the helicopter to allow a nice smooth ride. When you start using autopilot, or auto harbour, this one will come on as well and it will hold it extremely steady. I haven't put any weapons on at the moment, uh, I don't need to for the startup routine. What I'm going to do now is take off. One thing I can do with the Abris, by the way, is if we switch the nav mode until the map and then we switch on map, we can zoom in and see where we are. Okay, so that was a call from one of the Reapers. Now what we've got to do is take off. There's a number of different ways of taking off. I'm, I'm just going to basically take off. Just to explain a little bit about the trim. Right, so I'm nosing forward. In fact, I'll tell you what. I'll put the axis on. I'm going to nose forward a little bit. As I start to ro uh, rotate or pull back the collective. 
we'll see the helicopter take up and it naturally starts to go backwards so we're going up quite slowly now I've trimmed the helicopter okay you see we're drifting back a little bit so I'm just going to bring it round a little bit more I'm just trying to trim the movement out effectively doing a hover test now the trim on this is a little bit different to trim on other things if you notice in the hood you see a diamond and that's where the trim has been set to okay so we've got a uh, let's turn around you'll see I'm turning away from that trim point now if I relax you'll see the helicopter I've got no feet on no hands on anything it rotates itself all the way back round to where the trim is just bear that in mind if ever you're fighting the trim it's G for undercarriage now what I'm doing is coming over here I'm going to use the lines. Lower gear. Lower gear. To set the set the trim. So the trim works by you switch it and let go, and it's when you let go, the trim kicks in. So we've got a little bit of drift going slightly back and left. I'm going to push that forward a little bit. It's actually windy as well. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is just balance out that bit of drift trim again, let go. If you've got uh, a joystick with no force feedback, as soon as you've trimmed, you must let go or centre the stick. If you don't, you can't use the stick and you will end up crushing because it doesn't do anything. I'm going to trim again, just there. Each time I trim, that's not bad. Okay, we'll have a look at the external side of the helicopter that's running quite well so Armor basically as I said before if I start moving around and then I'm just going to let go of everything so no pedals no rotational joystick not touching anything you'll see it just turns all the way around and tries to settle on that trim point okay now the navigation system on this is a little bit more complex than say the Huey in fact it's a whole lot more complex than the Huey so what we'll be doing is covering that in another tutorial so hopefully just subscribe if you want and uh, please leave a comment and I'll discuss more about the Black Shark in later tutorials, thank you